Stop worrying, Pa. They'll be home in time. Pretty rough weather out there. Wonder if that coffee's still hot. Want some? Hmm? Yeah, thank you. I'm saying did a great job with that cake, didn't he? Yeah. Happy birthday, Hoss. You know, I can never picture Hoss being a baby. Well, for your information, young man, he was a fine, strapping boy. Look, if you're gonna worry about him, I'll go out and look for him. Oh, I'm not worried. I, I, they'll, they'll be here, they'll be here. Why don't you go upstairs and rest? You, you, you must be tired. Dan, what are you gonna do? I got plenty to keep me busy down here. You're not just gonna sit here and worry, are you? No, 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 no. Go on, go on. All right, I'll be reading in my room. Take your coffee with you. Yes, sir. Happy birthday, son. Your son, Inga, my love. So long ago and so far away. of Timbuktu. What would you do? What would you do? I'd lay some eggs all filled with whiskey and get drunk as a kangaroo. <laughs> what would you do? What would you do? Oh, if I was a tavern keeper from the Sagamon Valley so blue, what would you do? What would you do? Line the pretty girls up on Main Street and kiss the ones dressed in Cali Coo. <laughs> Gunner, you're a horse. That's what he is, boys. He's a horse. A horse? You call me a horse? <laughs> Not a horse, you crazy Swede. A horse. That's Smoky Mountain for a big man with a, a right, pleasant way. Oh, then that's good, huh? Then I be horse. 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 Horse Borgstrom. <laughs> another round of drinks, boys. Anytime a man gets a new name, that calls for another round of drinks. <laughs> well, what'll it be, stranger? Whiskey or ale? Nothing. Like some information. Information? What kind of information? I was wondering where I could find some work. I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place, friend. It's been a bad year. <laughs> Lots of these local boys looking for work. Do any kind of job. I got a sick boy out there. Now, you might try that sawmill at the edge of town. But uh, I'm afraid you won't have much luck. Well. I'll try there. Thanks. Hey, you! Maybe that'll help you get out of town, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey! Isn't that enough? Or would uh, 10 cents make you move faster, huh? <laughs> Gunner, you're a bad judge of men. You're too extravagant. You can tell by just looking at him that he's only worth a nickel. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Today I feel generous. <laughs> Here's a dime, mister.
Come and get it. Gunner, you and the rest quiet down, or I'll throw you out myself. You. Come here. Well, you handled yourself pretty well. I'd have cracked their heads together myself. I could use a man like you around here. Do odd jobs, clean up, <laughs> occasionally throw somebody out. I'll pay you a dollar a day in food. How about it? When do you want me to start? That's up to you. I'll be back. Oh, just a minute. Uh, you can probably use this. I'll be back. How are you feeling now, Adam? My head still hurts, Paul, but I'm getting hungry. Well, that's a good sign. That shows you're getting better. Paul, are we going to eat soon? Yeah, son, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go get something to eat. I'll be, I'll be right back. Mrs. Nielsen. I hope your daughter likes the fabric. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Uh, yes, I... Uh, some milk and bread. You have a container for the milk? No. Oh, it's all, it's all right. I'll loan you one. You can return it later. I, uh, I have not seen you before. You must be a stranger in town. Yes, I... Would you happen to know of a room that I could rent? Cheap, where they don't object to children? So, you have children. A five-year-old boy. And your wife, she is with you? Now, my boy and I are alone. Well, uh, there is a Mrs. Miller who has a boarding house across the street. It's uh, not very elegant, but it's clean, and I'm sure she won't object to a little boy of five. Oh. How much will that be? Ten cents should do it. Would you, uh, would you have anything for a fever? Oh, you are not feeling well. Oh, it's not for me. Ah. Adam, I told you to stay in the wagon. Now, come along. Feeling so uh... My goodness, child, your head feels warm. Open your mouth, let me see your throat. Oh, it is not bad, just a little on the pink side. It's a thing of the throat children get. Oh, wait a minute. I have something for that. Ah. What is it? It's salt pork and onions. Don't laugh, it's an old Swedish remedy. I'm sure it will help. Uh, when you get to the boarding house, ask Mrs. Miller to heat it. Well, how, how much will this be? Nothing. It's for the boy. Well, I, I don't need charity. I'm not offering you charity. I'm, I'm offering you medicine for your boy, because I happen to like children. Goodbye, Adam. I hope you feel better. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Come on, Adam. Good afternoon, Inger. How's business? Business is fine, thank you, Mr. McWhorter. Oh, is it? I thought it was a little slow. The town's not doing so well these days. Oh, he's just some drifter. I gave him a job cleaning out the stable. Oh, well, let's hope he does a good job of it then. <laughs> now, 
When am I going to get my answer? I gave you your answer, Mr. McWhorter. I'm not ready to get married yet. Oh, come now, Inger. You're not going to keep me waiting forever, are you? Well, I'm sorry if you object to waiting. <laughs> well, I don't mind waiting. Uh, something I want. You do believe in getting what you're after, don't you? Well, I always have. At least I have up to now. I'd also be very grateful if you heated this up for him. Oh, the poor little boy. Of course. You can come down for it in just a few moments. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Well, my goodness. You certainly didn't waste any time finishing that up. I sure wish there'd been some jam with the bread. Yeah, well, it filled up the cavity, and tomorrow we'll have some real food. Huh? Sure, Pa. Pa? Yes, son? Pa, did you have anything to eat? Oh, I'll, I'll have something to eat later. Uh, I'll go down and wait for that medicine. I wouldn't like that medicine much, but that lady who gave it to us, she was nice, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she was real nice. Again, Gunnar? You are always emptying it, little brother, but you never help to fill it. Do I have the right? Our father left a store to both of us. And he expected both of us to run it. Not one of us to waste his time and money in McWhorter's tavern. Don't tell me what to do. I'm not made out for a storekeeper. What are you made for, Gunnar? To drink, to play cards, to spend your time with your friends talking of going off to gold mines? I'm old enough not to take orders for my sister. I will do as I want. Please, Gunnar. You are wasting your life doing as you want. We could make a success of the story if you would work in it. I will not work in it. I told you I was cut out for other things. If you would only marry McWhorter, I could sell this stupid store. The ground is rich with gold in Canada. And I've been hearing such tales it makes my very skin crawl and my hands itch for the feel of it. Yeah, but you need money for gear, for grub. The boys and I sold everything that we have to McWhorter. We got all the money we need. Me, I don't have any money. But you have a store. Sell it, man, sell it. McWhorter will buy it. It belongs half to my sister. But it's all in your name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's all in my name. Then that makes it yours. Canada's no place for the soft-hearted, Gunner. You boys talking about Canada again, as usual? Not just talking about it, McWhorter. We'll all soon be on our way. All but you, eh, Gunner? What about my offer? That'll get you there and beyond. You know why I can't sell you the store? Why not? Aren't you man enough to handle your sister? I'm man enough, I'll see it, and you knew it! It's the Inger. She's as stubborn as my father was. <laughs> All she needs is a husband. Wouldn't you like to tame her, McWhorter? He asked me if he could play it. I said it was all right. What are you doing here? Well, I'm giving your son his medicine. I knew you'd be busy. I can take care of my son. Oh, 
Well, I'm sure you can, but not while you're working all day. Miss Borgstrom, I had to accept your medicine. That doesn't mean I can't run my own affairs. But, Mr. Cartwright, why are you so against anyone helping you? Adam, I don't ever want you to play this again. Do you understand? Yeah, he, uh, he told me about the music box. Did it belong to his mother? Yes, it did. He's better. His throat is better. His fever seems less. But uh, I think he should continue with the medicine. Yeah, I... Uh... I was going to come by the store as soon as I cleaned up a bit. I, I, I don't mean to be ungrateful. It's just... You know, without that dirty beard, your face looks quite nice. In fact, if you wore a smile on it, sometimes it might be quite an attractive face. You know, I think you could use a good meal yourself, Mr. Cartwright. As soon as Adam is asleep, come to my house for dinner. It's right next to the store. She's a real nice... I know, son. She's a real nice lady. <laughs> well, young fella, let's finish up this medicine. The food is not much. Oh, it's been very good. The winter has been hard all through Illinois. Not as hard as those farmers when it comes to paying their bills. They will pay their bills, Gunnar. They are honest people. Honest people who want everything on credit. Please, Gunnar, we have a guest. Oh, this looks wonderful. And I do thank you for your hospitality. Have you uh, been a long time on the road? Yes. Yes, we haven't come too far in the amount of time it's taken. Four years to get from New England to Illinois. Four years? But surely it should not take so long. Well, we weren't on the move all the time. We uh, made quite a few stops. Uh, have to have funds to keep going. Yeah. A man can go nowhere without money. You, uh, you say you came from New England. Uh, what did you do there? I was a seaman most of my life. I wound up a first mate. When I got married, I opened up a ship's chandler's shop, you know, outfitting ships. And when my wife died, my boy and I set out to build a new life. Why didn't you go back to sea? There's a life for a man. It's pretty hard to raise a boy when you're off at sea most of the time. I'd always had a dream about the West. It's a new country, it's big. I, I wanted to be part of it, to build, to Grow things. Yeah, yeah. That was just like my father. He had a dream of a new land, too. Where did he get him? A dirty store on a prairie crossroad. He worked at a sweat poured off him, and all he had when he died was uh, that store. But his dream of a new land, at least he never gave that up. What do I care about a storekeeper's dream? That is your sin, Gunnar. It is a sin to not care. Don't tell me what's a sin. Don't preach to me all the time. I'm sick of listening to you. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. This was no way to treat a guest. It's been a wonderful evening. I, I, I haven't enjoyed one like this for such a long time. But I... I really should be going. I left Adam with Mrs. Miller. I, I hope... I hope we will be friends. Thank you. Good night, Miss Borstrom. Good night, Mr. Cartwright.
The fox grapes are sweet. Hmm. Everything around here is sweet. The air, the water, the company. You, uh, you have a big spot of purple on your chin. What are you looking at? There's so many places I might have passed through on my way west. I might have missed you. Well, I am a very large peasant woman, Ben. It would be hard to miss me. <laughs> You're a very beautiful peasant woman. Oh, nay, my nose is too long and my hands are rough. You're fishing for compliments. <laughs> well, I hope I do better with those than with the catfish. Oh, you leave those to Adam. He's a pretty good fisherman. He's a fine boy, Ben. Yes. It was nice of you to ask us to share a picnic with you. Well, it's Sunday, isn't it? A man deserves a rest after a long week's work. We have a river in Sweden like the Sangamon. Cold from the snows on the mountains. When we were children, my brother Gunnar and I used to run along the banks picking strawberries, eating them until we were sick. <laughs> you have a head full of happy memories, haven't you? And you? Some good, some bad. You, uh, you loved your wife very much, didn't you? Yes, sir. I loved her very much. Inger! Inger! Ah, here you are. I've been looking all around for you. Why, is there anything wrong? Get back to town right away. But it is Sunday. The store is closed. Mr. McVorter came around in his new carriage asking for you. I did not tell Mr. McVorter I would go riding with him. No. But you uh, go off on a picnic with a penniless drifter. Gunnar! Gunnar, wait a minute. You stay out of this. I'm trying to tell you there's nothing to be angry about. I tell you something. You stay away from my sister. Gunnar, you are my brother, not my father. You be quiet. I do what is best for you. You do not run my life. You get back to town. Oh, Ben, I'm sorry. He's, he's young and unhappy. And very angry with me. Hello, Gunnar. Did you tell your sister I was looking for her yesterday? Yeah, I tell her. Well, come on, man, tell me what you say. My sister's a stubborn woman, Mr. McWhorter. You're the man in the house, aren't you? That your father's gone, it's your job to see that things go right by your sister. Yeah, and I want them to go right for her. It's our father's wish that I watch out for her. Watch out for her? How, by seeing her waste away in that store across the street? Mr. McWhorter. If I sell you the store and Inger still doesn't marry you, what happens to her then? Would not marry me? Well, I've got everything in the world to give her, the richest man in the county. I'd help you, too. Me? <laughs> I don't need help. Oh, it takes money to go to the gold fields, Gunner. Lots of it. Now, I could help a brother-in-law. Give him all the money he needs. So you tell her, Gunner. Tell her how good I'd be for the both of you. Then you'd be better off without that stranger around. Stranger? That man you have working for you. My sister went on a picnic with him yesterday. With Cartwright? She's seeing him. And I think she likes him. Cartwright, I want to talk to you. Yes, Mr. McWhorter. It's about Inger Borgstrom. 
Yes? I'm going to marry her. I didn't know. She didn't tell me anything about that. And I don't want some shiftless drifter hanging around her. When Miss Borgstrom tells well, me that... I'm telling you. And here's something else I'm telling you. There's no place in this town for you. Does that mean I'm fired? That's exactly what it means. Here, Drifter. Maybe you're not too proud to take that now, huh? Listen to me. Why? So you can tell me you're going to marry McWhorter? Marry McWhorter? Who told you that ridiculous story? McWhorter did, just before he fired me. And you believed him? Why shouldn't I? Is, is that why you're moving again? Did you hear me, Ben? There's nothing for me in this town. There's no future here. So what will you do? Go glowering through the world the rest of your life? What becomes of Adam? He'll be all right. I'll take care of him. Can you? Ben, listen to me. How much longer can you go on drifting this way, running away from your memory of Elizabeth? She has nothing to do with it. She dwells over your head like a cloud. She's, she's in your voice, in your, in your heart. Well, she's dead, Ben. You can't carry her with you for the rest of your life. It's my life. It's my business. I, I have a better answer than that, a, a simple solution. You, you could come to work for me in the store. If your stubborn pride would let you. I don't need your help. I don't need any woman's help. I'm man enough to stand on my own two feet. I'll tell you what I think, Ben Carter. I, I think you left, you left your manhood behind with your dead wife. <laughs> I do know. Inga, Inga, I, I'd like to talk to you. Talk? What good will talking do? Inga, I, I want to do as you suggest. I, I'll work in the store. Oh, Ben, that's wonderful. Inger, I, I'm not a rich man. I have a young son. But I do have a, a dream, a big dream. When I could ask you to share it with me. Yeah. Ask me, Ben, ask me. Inger, I... Inger? Yes, Ben, I will marry you. <laughs> what will people say? What will they think? <laughs> well, people will say that Miss Inger Borgstrom is going to marry Mr. Benjamin Cartwright. <laughs>
There are no more customers, Ben, so I'm going home to fix supper. Would you uh, pick Adam up at Mrs. Miller's? Yes, I will. I'll bring him along with me. Hurry, I'm an impatient woman. <laughs> oh, Ben, um, would you mind very much seeing if Gunnar would come to supper? He has not eaten with us for days. Inga, do you think Gunnar resents Adam and me eating with you all the time? I think he resents me working here, and I know he resents me loving you. Don't be angry with him, Ben. He is my brother, and I do love him, even though he is young and sulks. All right, I'll try to bring him along. Oh, but don't have an argument with him if he does not want to come. Well, I'll be as gentle as a lamb. <laughs> Regret this. Gunner? Say, you look like you could use a good meal. Why don't you come along home with me? I'm not going home. Stay away from me, drifter. Well, your sister's kind of worried about you. She'd like you especially to come home tonight. I told you I'm not going home. I'm going to the gold fields. Well, of course you're going to the gold fields, Gunnar. But you're not going tonight. He's telling the truth, Cartwright. And I have the money, too. We just made a business deal. That's right. A business deal. I sold him the store. You what? You had no right. Me had every right. His father left the deed in his name. I kept it in my safe. Now I own the shop. You did this to your sister. How could you? You get half the money. For years, your sister supports you, and you do this. Don't preach to me. Leave me alone. You give him back that money and get back the deed. Maybe without the store, he won't be so anxious to marry your sister, eh, Gunnar? <laughs> Negorda, you're right. You don't want my sister. You just want the store. <laughs> Gunnar! Gunnar! <laughs> Boys had too much to drink. I better take him home. Not in that condition. You go ahead. I'll take care of him. Yeah, maybe you're right. seem to understand. I said Gunnar sold the store. Well, how can you find that funny? Oh, Ben, don't you see in the way it is? Ever since we decided to get married, I have been trying to get up the courage to do as Gunnar wanted and sell the store. Ben, now we can go west. We can find that dream of yours. We can build what you always wanted. But, but you mustn't do this for me. How could I build anything on your sacrifice? Sacrifice? To have found a purpose, a place in life with you. you you're so... <laughs> Inga, I, I know how you feel about Gunnar, though. Ben, I love you. You are my life now. It is time for Gunnar to make his own way. Oh, don't you see, my love? This is the way it should be. Oh, Doctor, come in. What is it? I have your brother here, Miss Borgstrom. I'm afraid he's badly hurt. Bring him in the bedroom, quickly. I 
likely her to see. You should know, Cartwright. When will you be back, Doctor? When I finish my rounds. And uh, what can I do meanwhile? Well, not very much, I'm afraid. Just uh, keep him quiet. You know, with a fractured skull, we can't tell when he'll regain consciousness. But I'll be back. Ben, how could you? I, I don't understand. You fought with him, didn't you? The doctor says you almost killed him. I hit him, yes. You hit him. Ben, I thought the anger was gone. I thought when you said you loved me, the anger would go. I didn't hit him in anger. I, I didn't hit him that hard. And now he is lying in that room and he may be dying. Inga, please. Ben, don't. Please go. There's something terribly wrong here. You must believe me. Lie down for a little while and stay here with Miss Inger. Pa, what happened to Uncle Gunnar? I don't know, son. But I'm going to find out. Good evening, Miss Borgstrom. Oh, yes, Constable. Mr. McWhorter told me what happened to your brother. It's a terrible thing. How is Gunnar? We, uh, we don't know yet. I'm sorry to be bothering you, but I thought the sooner you preferred charges, the sooner I could arrest that man. Um, Cartwright is his name, isn't it? Yes, that is his name. But there will be no charges. No charges? If your brother dies, this man Cartwright is a murderer. And if Gunnar recovers, he should be punished anyway. I say there will be no charges. Ma'am, you're making a mistake. This Cartwright fellow should be in jail. Good night, Constable. Good night, ma'am. Miss Singer? Yes, Adam? Miss Singer? My pa should be in jail. Is my pa bad? Poor darling. No, he is not bad. He may get angry and do a bad thing. But no, Adam, he is not bad. You did a gunner after I left. Well, I sent for the doctor and I took him home. The gunner wasn't hurt, not as he is now, when I left him here. You listen to me, Cartwright. If you had any sense, you'd get out of town before they pick you up. I'll get out of town after I find out the truth. Well, what do you want me to do about it? I want you to tell Inga what happened. Get your hands off me. I'm a quarter. I want you to tell Inga what happened. There's no need for any fighting. All I want is the truth. And I want you to tell him.
Yes, Adam. Is my pa coming to get me? Yes, Adam, he will. Do you love my pa? Yes, Adam, I do. Then why did you send him away? Oh, Adam, it's something I just can't explain. Go to sleep now. Hmm? Tell you nothing. Ben. How's gonna? I think he's going to be all right. I'm gonna see him. I gotta talk to him. But the doctor said. Gunnar. Gunnar. I thought he could tell me the truth. The truth? But you said you hit him. Yes. Yes, I hit him. In a moment of anger, I lashed out at him, and I'm sorry for it. But you believe that I could do Something like this to him. What else can I believe? I thought once you could believe in me, in my love for you. You hit a man, and love is lost. Nothing to be done, nothing. <laughs> oh, Ben, I want to believe you. Help me. Not if you'll always have doubts about me. Either you love me with all your heart, or there's no love at all. Oh, what shall I do? What shall I do? And Here. Ben did not do this to me. after I left. I remember falling to the floor. After you left, I started to get up and something hit me on the head. That's the last I remember. McWhorter. It must have been McWhorter. He was the only one there. Yeah, but he'll never admit it. Ben, does he have to admit it? If he doesn't, how will you ever know the truth? You, you just told me, Ben. You said if one loves, one must love with all one's heart. I do, Ben. I do love you with all my heart. Ben and I would like to be married soon. Do we have your blessing? I keep the pride away, yeah? Yeah. Just you take care of my sister. I'll take care of my wife. And Matt will take care of your sister. I hope you find what you're looking for. Maybe. Maybe not. But at least I would have tried. As you, Inger, take with you my love and grateful heart. Goodbye, Gunnar. You will be always in my thoughts and prayers. I hope you find your land, Ben, and raise fine sons. My friends once called me horse, which means a good man with friendly ways. 
You are that too, Ben. When you and Inger have a son, I, I hope his friends call him horse too. Goodbye, Adam. You take good care of them, huh? Goodbye, Uncle Gunnar. Turn to flip with me, ain't nothing. Oh, you're not hurt bad enough. No, I just stole up a little bit, ain't sir? So. Oh, good. Hey. <laughs> Where's Adam? He's out there in the barn putting up the horses. Dog gone, Paul. Looks good, don't it? Sure is pretty. Hey, you're not gonna cut that cake without me, are you? Hey, happy birthday, brother. Hey, what happened to your arm? No, I just stove it up a little bit, hurrying home for this cake. There's nothing wrong with the other hand. Go on and cut the cake. We've been waiting all night. Wait till I light the candles. I guess you did have a long night, huh, Paul? I had plenty to think about. So did I. Had a whole lot to think about, didn't I, Adam? How good that cake was going to be when I got here. But it was worth waiting for. Yeah. It was worth waiting for. I'll make a wish. Yeah. What's going on here? What's happening? This town's being split down the middle. That's what's happening. The mans and them clerks won't stop until they kill each other. I'm glad you're in town. The judge wants to see you. Huh? Come in. Well, Judge, how is his honor the judge? Fine, thank you, Ben. How are things up at the Ponderosa? Well, not too bad, not too bad. I've been wanting to get in touch with you. Yeah, uh, Clem said something about you wanted to talk to me about the... Silly feud between the Mains and the Clarks. Oh, now, wait a minute, Ben. It's not so silly. Huh? It's gotten to the point where everybody in town's caught between them. And what's more important, it's reached a state of potential violence where innocent people can get hurt. Well, Clem, you've got all the authority you need to handle uh, the situation. <laughs> when the Mains and the Clarks start knocking each other around, there isn't a thing I can do. One of them comes in with a busted nose, and I say, what happened? He said, I fell off the barn. <laughs> With Sheriff Coffey out of town, they don't listen so good to a deputy. Oh, come on now. You, uh, you're not going to let them get away with that so easily, are you? Can't you arrest them for uh, disorderly conduct or uh, fine them for disturbing the peace? There are all kinds of things you can do. We can go on making small official acts that won't really stop the trouble. Or we can allow the violence to erupt into killings on both sides and then punish the offenders. But best of all, we can try with the aid of men of good will to prevent murder before it can happen. Now, Ben, the judge here has appointed a committee of townspeople to uh, tackle the problem. Go and talk to the Mans and the Clarks. That's a good idea. You are elected spokesman, unanimous. Me? 
And why would people think that I'm so deserving of such a dubious honor? Because you're impartial, Ben. Because both the Mayans and the Clarks respect you. I can't accept this, this kind of a responsibility. I... And you're not going to flatter me into taking it on by using words like uh, impartial and respect and, and words like... Uh, besides, I'm too busy. I got a ranch. I got a ranch to run. All right. If that's the way you feel about it, I guess there's no law can make you do it. Oh, I guess there is no law can make me do it. <laughs> took the four shot of that whiskey and he found out it was pure vinegar it like brought the whole bar down. <laughs> you know, I've been hearing about this feud between the Mayans and the Clarks for months now, but I still don't know how it got started. Well, it, uh, it started when uh, young Jim Clark up and married Carolyn Mann and they had twins. That started the feud? Well, not until they uh, up and took the twins and moved east. And well, I still don't understand. Well, the reason they moved east was uh, each family was so jealous of the twins that Jim and Carolyn were caught right in the middle, so they just up and left. And both families kept blaming each other for running them off, right? Well, with that for a start, they've been fighting over every other thing they could think of ever since. Is it necessary for you boys to continue this conversation about the Mayans and the Clark? Is it absolutely necessary? <sighs> Gee, you know, the other day I was, uh, down by Salt Creek, see how that new dam was holding up, and, uh, well, that stream down there is nothing but a mud bank now, and, you know, it took me five minutes to get my horse to cross it. But he's a smart horse. He, uh, once he realized the barn was on the other side, uh, he just finally made up his mind that he had to go through with it, so he stepped right in and went right across without a slip. I spent a small fortune educating my oldest son, and he entertains me with old-fashioned homilies. No, I guess you're right, though, Adam. I, I suppose I'll have to step in, whether I want to or not. Horse! Coming, Paul. Paul, oh, why has it always got to be me? How come you don't take little Joe? Now, you were so all fine anxious to get me into this thing, right? I figure you should each have a chance to try to help. How are we going to help without guns? Get over there at the man's and get in trouble. Now, look, if you're trying to be a peacemaker in the feud, you can't go around carrying a gun, can you? No. What are your plans? You figuring on influencing them with words? No, no, but uh, coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. Well, I thought it'd be kind of nice if we had a, a welcome party for the new minister. You know, everybody brings some food and we'd have a real get acquainted party. You mean with the man's and the clerks both there? Well, of course. That's just the point, don't you see? I figure they're not going to be doing any fighting right there in front of the church. And that'll give the new minister a chance to get to work on them right away. Yeah. I'll bet he'll appreciate your efforts too, Paul. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Baked a fresh pie, and I can fetch coffee in the middle. Oh, well, that's wonderful. That fresh pie really smells good. Horse, you going to sample that? Oh, dang, I reckon I am. Mm, it looks good. Tom around? No, he's out on the range checking fences. Oh. A little trouble in town yesterday, and we never know what them clocks may be up to. 
Yeah. This uh, trouble between you and the clocks, that's been going on quite a while now. It's going on for quite a while longer. Caroline was the only child Tom and I had, and the clocks drove her and her babies away. Oh, well, now, do you think that this quarrel is going to make the, the loss any the less painful? Ben, if someone drove your sons away, would you think of them with kindness, treat them with love? Now, Winifred, I, I don't think the clocks drove your daughter away. Miss Mann, how much good do you reckon all this fighting and arguing is doing Caroline? You're on the Clark side. Oh, ma'am, we ain't on nobody's side. Well, of course we're not on anybody's side. We just thought maybe we could talk a little about no, it. I have nothing to talk about, Ben. Well, uh, anyway, what uh, really came about, uh, you know, the new minister is going to be here next Sunday, Palm Sunday. Yes, I know. We're looking forward to meeting him. Yeah, we've missed going to church ever since we lost old Pastor Miller. Yeah, that was a real loss. Well, we, uh, we all thought it might be... Real nice if uh, if we could have a nice welcome for the new minister. Everybody bring some food and we can have a real good get-together right after the services. Oh, that's a fine idea, Ben. I'll bring something really nice. Well, good. I knew we could count on you, Winifred. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Horse, I guess we'd better be getting along. Got a lot of other people to invite. Yeah. Thank you, Winifred. Can't leave that good pie. Ben. <laughs> yeah. Are you inviting the Clarks? Well, uh, of course. They're members of the church, too. All right. But just make sure at the party that the food is kept separate. We couldn't eat Clark food. I'm sorry. We would choke on it. Maybe. How are you? How are you, Mr. Cartwright? Just fine. Hello, little Joe. How are you, Peggy? Hey, Claire, you get prettier every time I see you. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. By golly, I hadn't realized how, how grown up you'd become. Well, I'm grown up, all right. Fact is, I should be hanging out with my own kids' wash instead of my brothers and sisters. Well, Peggy, a girl as pretty as you must have a lot of young men buzzing around. Well, the trouble is, the nicest ones all seem to be related to, uh, you know who. Oh, uh... Your mom and Pa around? Well, Pa's out on the ranch somewhere, and Mom went to town for supplies. Oh. Well, I'll tell you why we came by. You know, next Sunday, Palm Sunday. Well, that's when the new minister arrives. And we thought it'd be kind of nice if we had a welcome party for him after the sermon. You know, everybody brings some food, and we have a good old get-together. Well, that's a wonderful idea, Mr. Cartwright. I'd be glad to tell him. Good. Uh, is everybody coming? Yeah, yeah, everybody's going to be there. Even the man's. Shh, don't use that name around here. Stampede the stock. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad somebody around here's got a sense of humor about this silly feud. Well, don't judge the clocks by me, Mr. Cartwright. Believe me, no one else takes it lightly. Must be pretty tough on you being caught in the middle of a feud like this. Well, it's worse than that, little Joe. Never knowing when one of your family is going to kill or, or be killed. I sure hope that new minister can do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, I sure hope he can. Well, Peggy, uh, you give uh, your folks our regards and the message, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday. I'll be there. It's the only time I get to see any of those good-looking man men. <laughs> Bye. See you Sunday, Peggy. Bye. Good to see you. Clem, how are you? Judge, hello, Ben. You had us word. We thought you were going to be late. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Hop Singh is away on a visit. It took the boys and me a little longer to prepare the food without his help. Well, if you hurry up and get here, the more I smell that food, the more hollow I feel. <laughs> hollow? Yep. Have you been dipping into those beans and pork all the way in from the ranch? Yeah, well, I'm afraid our beans and pork are going to look kind of puny up against all those fancy dishes. I'm getting kind of hungry. <laughs> I think I'm a little too nervous to eat. Oh, 
Oh, here come the man's. Well, Ben, where do you want us to put the food and some of the finest milk produced in the territory? <laughs> well, that's mighty nice of you, Tom. It's sure we all appreciate your generosity. Uh, Tom wanted you and the boys uh, take your gun belts off and... Well, we don't hardly go anywhere without them these days. Well, none of us is wearing a gun, of course, except Clem here. I can see that. But you don't expect us to ride these roads unarmed, do you? Why, we could be bushwhacked by the Clarks from any tree or rock. We don't need no rock to shoot at the Mayans when we want to. Come. Come now. Just, uh... John? John, this is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Just keep things peaceful. There ain't no Sunday peaceful with the Mayans around. Want any guns drawn? Do you understand? Not one. Take off your gun belts. Put them over there. I don't trust the man. Make them drop theirs first. Ben, Clem, I get out of the way. Now listen to me, you two. You're just getting a little tired of all this ruckus and feuding and, and fussing and, 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 and all this violence. Now, now, just take off your gun belts or, or get out of here. No. Everyone is welcome here. That must be the new preacher. How'd he get there? This is your church, and I am its guardian. Hatred has no place here. This is a house of love, and you will enter as friends and neighbors. He got in there without us seeing him. He sure handled everything. Yeah. Thank God. Gentlemen, you're at the right place to do just that. You're not disturbing me. I thought everybody had left. It's been quite a day, so I came in here and to gather my thoughts. Well, most everybody has gone home. But Mr. Cartwright said he'd give me a ride, so I, I thought I'd wait and have a word with you. All right, Miss Peggy. What are your words? Well, maybe it'll sound silly, but I wanted to thank you. To most of us young people, a year seems like an awful long time. To us, it seems like this terrible feud's been going on forever. I understand. I sometimes suffer from impatience myself, though it never helps to solve the problem. 
Oh, there you are, Peggy. We're all ready to go now. Well, Reverend, I'll, I'll say goodbye again. Uh, oh, I wasn't interrupting anything, was I? No. Oh, of course not, Mr. No. Cartwright. I was just telling the Reverend how happy we are he's here. How grateful we are. Well, we, we certainly are grateful, Reverend. I, at the risk of repeating myself, I'd like to say again how inspiring your sermon was today. I, I, I've never seen the congregation as quiet or as attentive as it was. It was real fine. You know, I, I never thought that I, I would see what happened today. To see the clocks and the mayhands join together in the hymn singing. Yeah, they joined together again pretty good a little later when they tackled all that food at the welcome party. <laughs> Didn't they? Do you think that this could be the beginning of the end of the feud? Well... I mean, wouldn't it just be wonderful if it were all over? Yeah, it would be. But I think you're being overly optimistic. Well, maybe so, Reverend, but... Uh... As head of the committee in charge of trying to get the mans and the clerks to settle the differences, I can tell you, we're pretty happy you arrived. <laughs> You'd like to transfer your burden over to me? Well, uh, yeah, well, no, not, not exactly. I, I, but uh, you think that that responsibility is now mine. Is that it? Well, Reverend, I... Well, it seems to me that well, these people are suffering some sort of moral illness and... Well, isn't that your calling, to minister to such illnesses? Ministers are human beings, too, Mr. Cartwright. They're not all wise and all healing. My capacity for healing this breach is probably no greater than yours. Well, I, I thought we all hope... We all hope that we can transfer our decisions and burdens to other people, even ministers. But there are some problems you can't give away. Hello, Ben. Judge. I was afraid you might have already gone home. Oh, no, we were... Was something wrong? Yes. I came to see you, Reverend. I have a problem. I thought perhaps you could help. Yes, whatever I can do. This concerns you too, Peggy. It's bad news, I'm afraid. I... I just received a wire from the authorities back east in Illinois about your brother and his wife. There's been an accident. An accident? What do you mean? Jim and... Jim and Carolyn. Not... dead. The wire said... I'm terribly sorry. Oh, no. And the twins? Well, they're all right. Reverend, I thought perhaps you could help break the news to the Mayans and the Clarks. No. No, I, I'll do it. I'll go home and tell Ma and Pa. I'll go with you and then go over to the Mayans. Well, I'll drop you both off. Babies. Those poor babies. I'll... I'll get my things. Miss Peggy. I wish I had the words to express my sympathy. Don't need words. I understand. Terrible tragedy for those poor families. Judge, you said the children were spared. What's going to happen to them? The wire covered that, too. This concerns you, Ben. Hmm? The authorities in Illinois said that the parents' last request was that the twins be placed in your custody until you could decide their future. Well, why, why would they request a thing like that? Very good friend of the family? Well, yes. Perhaps they remember that you remained impartial during the quarrel between the two families. Well, that's much, much too much of a responsibility. That was the parents' last request. Of course, you could ignore the arrival of the children. Let the Clarks and the Mayans fight it out.
No, I guess I... I couldn't do that. Make a decision is certainly going to take a... wisdom far greater than mine. I'm ready. Judge, you're sure. Twins are coming out on this stage. You saw the wire yourself, Ben. Reverend, both families understand clearly. You explained everything very carefully. They were both very upset by the news, but I'm sure they understand. I don't want to be influenced one way or the other by the Clarks or the Mayhem. Afraid you have no choice. Look. Both gave me your word there wouldn't be any trouble. There isn't going to be any trouble. My wife here just wanted to see the kids, see that they're all right. They've been through a bad time. Oh, Tom, I know exactly how you and Winifred feel, but I want you to promise me that you won't upset the children once they arrive. How about them? John, I just got through talking to Tom and Winifred. In fact, Dad, I don't want the children disturbed once they arrive. You just came in to see the kids. Wanted to make sure... And they're all right. Just make sure that's all you do. Here comes the stage. Don't forget what I said now. Here, let me help you. Well, hello. Well, young fella. Well, you are Sue and you are Kenneth, aren't you? So you know who I am. I'm Ben Cartwright. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to get on that wagon over there. We're going to ride out to my ranch. It's called the Ponderosa. And after a good hot meal and a little bit of sleep, I'm going to show you some new animals which are just born. You can play with them. Would you like that? Mr. Cartwright? Why don't I tie a horse behind your wagon and come along? You might need help. Well, thank you, Reverend. That's very kind of you. I think I might need some help. Come on, let's go. Peggy, what are you doing here? I, I thought you might need some help with the twins. Peggy, the boys and I are... I told the boys to go on about their jobs. You what? I think they were glad to escape. Now, Peggy, you know I must remain impartial in this. I can't make it appear as if I'm playing favorites. I won't try to influence them, Mr. Cartwright. I promise. I... I just want to love them. Take them into the house. That young lady is wise beyond her years. The children need a woman's love right now. I only hope I can make the right decision. With God's help, you will. Come in, gentlemen. Hello, Adam. Adam. Reverend. Hello, Adam. Well, uh, I suppose you want to see Pa. A delegation like this must be uh, trouble, huh? That's just what it is. We've got to see your Pa, Adam. Well, come in and make yourself comfortable. <clears throat> well, uh, have you got a new hobby, Adam? No, uh... <laughs> I'm getting to be a pretty good expert at dressing dolls. That's the second time Sue dropped it down the well. How are the children doing, Adam? Oh, pretty good. Uh, after that first day, after Peggy got them calmed down, and uh, 
after we uh, got through this doll and uh, Kenny an animal to play with. Get, I'll get Pop. <clears throat> Man. What's up? Well, we came to see your pa, Hoss. Adam's gone to get him. Me and Joe are back there in the kitchen trying to whip up something to eat for the kids. You fellas join us? No, thanks. No, Hoss. Hey, 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 you can't go in there with that pig. Kenny? Now, look, how many times have I told you not to bring the piglets into the living room? <laughs> Joe, can't you take care of those kids without me? Now, look, I can't cook, watch the kids, and keep the pigs out of the living room all at the same time. Right, go on outside. Don't bring that pig in here anymore. We, uh, we didn't have any puppies to give the kids, so we gave them piglets. Gentlemen. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. I've been doing my paperwork upstairs. There are okay. less distractions up there. Sit down, sir. Thank you, man. Well, Adam tells me there's some sort of trouble. There sure is, Ben. I got word Tom Mayen's gathering his riders. He says you've had time enough to make up your mind. He won't wait any longer. Well, what's Tom Mayen going to do? Use guns to get the children? I don't know, but I think we ought to be prepared. Well, if Tom Mayen thinks he's going to shoot his way into the Ponderosa... Gentlemen, there's not going to be any shooting. That's no solution. Well, of course you're right, Reverend. That's no solution to... It's up to you, Mr. Cartwright. You've got to make up your mind about the children. Well, I need more time, though. I, I... I'm afraid time has run out on you. In just a few days, it'll be Easter Sunday. Let us tell the Mans and the Clarks you'll announce your decision then. Well, that's only a few days away. I... Mr. Cartwright, you must make a decision now for the children's sake. All right. Next Sunday, then. Easter. Fine. We'll tell both families. At least that way it'll delay any gunplay until then. I wish I could help. I wish you could help, too, Reverend. It's a lonely job. Trouble. Now you have any trouble. Catch him, Hoss! Hoss, go on, catch him! No, don't let that pig hit my man! Got it! Close the door! really a nice rabbit. You like rabbits, Kenny? I want my bear. You want your pig? You have a rabbit for Easter, not pigs. Now you let him button that jacket. Come on. Come, on. Come, on. Come, on. Come on, he's got a button. Come on, I got, the, I got Kenny's shoes here now. Come on. Let's, oh, let's more put buttons. Put them right down to my lap here, and then say, how you take that? Because I'm not Kenny, will you please stop wriggling? Now, look, you want everybody to see you looking real nice this morning. Won't you? Pa, are you Hold sure on. children are all good? No. Well, I don't know. Sometimes I have my doubts about you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. Either exchange the shoes or exchange the feet, whichever is the easier. The right one goes on the right foot. Oh, that's the way you gave it. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on now, Kenny. You take now, it look. easy and we'll get them up. You're in charge of Kenny here. Now, get him into the buckboard Thanks as soon a lot, as you can. Thanks a lot, Oh, my goodness, you look pretty. Now, here we go.
Come on, let's hurry. We now. better get him out there and let me dress him on the way. We're going to be late. Come on. Yeah. Come on, here. We're going to need let's a rope. Go. Now, may I escort you to the wagon? Yes. For my text this morning, I shall use portions from the Sermon on the Mount. They are words by which all of us can live. The most beautiful of all, I think, are these. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good unto them that hate you. And then, judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye will be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. It's right around here in the back. Can you find it? Yep. You need any help? No. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the children, for they shall be called the peacemakers. Before we sing our final hymn, I should like to announce that Ben Cartwright has selected today, Easter Sunday, as the day for the custody hearing here at the church at 2 o'clock. The care and custody of Kenny and Susan Clark will be granted to the family who can best prove its fitness for the task of caring for these children. We shall now sing hymn number 137. Wait for me at the livery stable. Right. Oh, are you sure you want me staying back yet? No, no, I'll be all right. I just want the twins out of sight for a while. Okay. Got right? It's up to you now. Yes, sir. Thank you for your help, Reverend. And for this, I, I guess it is up to me, but I don't feel quite so alone now. I have struggled many days with this problem, which concerns all of you. And I hope we can find a fair solution this afternoon. 
Mr. Clark and Mary, I ask you now, what can you offer these children should they be awarded to you? John, stand up. We have plenty to offer. You can tell them all about it. It doesn't seem quite right to me, Mary. Just to stand John, up here. I don't care if it's right or not. I want those children. Well, I tell you one thing I can offer these children. I can offer them a home. You all know I'm a well-to-do man. Not rich, but I've got enough money to give these children all the things they want. Just like my own children. Each one of them can have a horse to ride, and good food to eat, and warm clothes to wear. That's what Mary and I can offer these children. Uh, John, I, I don't think you quite understood the meaning of my words. I, I did not mean what can you offer in the way of uh, money or clothes or those are material things. Now this morning, you all heard the Reverend Jordan read to you from the Sermon on the Mount. You all bowed your heads. I heard you all answer, Amen, to those golden thoughts. So now I ask you, John Clark, and you, Mary Clark, will you love your enemies? If so, John, I ask you now to step across to Tom Mann here and offer your hand in friendship. You've got no right to ask that, Ben Cartwright. How can Mary and I forgive the Mayans? How can I offer my hand to a family that reviles me? I won't do it. All right, John. Very well. It seems to me, then, that you have very little to offer. All right, folks. Folks! Let's not have any disturbance in here. Tom? Tom, man? What do you and Winifred have to say? Tom, we have plenty to say. Just a minute. Tom, let me get up and Winifred. say Winifred! Ben, I think you know we're not rich. But we can match John Clark dollar for dollar. We'll do all the things for these youngsters we did for our own. For the one the Clarks drove away from us. And they did drive her away. You know that my daughter would still be alive if... Winifred, please, that is not the issue. We're here to decide which of you two families will have the custody of these children. And so I ask you, just as I asked John Clark, if you can provide for Kenneth and Sue the comfort and protection of a home where love of God is not just something that you hear about in church, but practice every day of your lives. Now, if you can, will you, Winifred, and you, Tom, step across to John and Mary and offer them the friendship of your hand? Ben, you're forgetting I once had a daughter. How can I offer my hand to the people who drove her away from me? First Samuel, second Samuel. <laughs> oh, my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house, and it came to pass the third day. And when I rose in the morning, behold, the child was dead. And the king said, bring me a sword. And they brought the sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two. to make my decision. I have called upon the wisdom of a man, a judge, 
who is far greater than I am. I've called upon the judgment of Solomon. Divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. These twins, Kenneth and Sue, will be divided in two. Kenneth will be given to the care of John and Mary Clark, Sue to the care of Winifred and Tom Mahon. Boss, you take Kenny to Mrs. Clark. Joe, take Sue to Mrs. Mahon. Stand for it. I don't want to go with you. I want to stand with my Do you sister. think we were right? Please, please. Wait. I mean, we right. Let Kenny and Sue do our work for us. <laughs> don't take me away from my sister. Oh, Kenny, darling. We're going to give you such a nice home. And, I, and I've got just the horse for you. <laughs> with, a, with a new saddle and a new bridle. I don't want a horse. I want my sister. Please don't take me away from Kenny. He needs me. Tom, I can't. Just I love them and want them. These children have to stay together. Come to me. She's yours. They're both yours. Be good to them. When it... Oh, darling. Oh, darling. take these babies away from Tom and Winifred who have none. I guess maybe you're right, Mary. Well, let's go over here. Go. Winifred, Tom, you need the children more than we do. John, it's been many years. So I wouldn't be very honest if I offered you my hand right now. But I hope after today it won't be too long. I hope it won't be either, Tom. Peacemakers. Thank you, Beth. I'm afraid this peacemaker had the help of someone with far greater wisdom than mine. If it weren't for the Reverend here, I... I'm the Reverend Jordan. I believe I'm expected here. Jordan? I'm sorry I was delayed. I hope you received my wire.
earth you doing way out here, little Joe? You're likely to get your brains out walking in this sun. Uh, Krusty, you know I couldn't go through the day without my constitutional. Uh, my horse spooked up in the mountains while I was checking fence. Probably halfway back to the Ponderosa by now. <laughs> well, I should have known you wouldn't be walking. You could avoid it. Well, come on aboard. Oh, of course, uh, when we get to Virginia City, I'm going to have to charge you for the 15 miles. Uh, anything's better than walking. What's the delay? Get along, driver. Stop the chatter. Driver, proceed immediately. All right, it's so all right, folks. Just giving a friend a lift. Well, come on up here. I've been looking for someone to draw with anyway. Besides, once we get moving, it's going to be a mite cooler up here than in there. <laughs> I don't know, it's a pretty good draft when that guy opens his mouth. Now. Coach. Don't try nothing. You're a European passenger. I got no intention of trying anything. Hey, uh, look, gents, you may as well forget it and leave. We don't even have a money box aboard this trip. Flancio! I mean, shut up. Put on your gun! All right, everybody out of the coach. What's the meaning of this, sir? Uh, who are these men? Take it easy, Mr. Dubose. This is what's known out here in the West as a stage holdup. This is outrageous. Driver, I demand you do something. <laughs> With those guns pointing at me, Mr. Dubose, I've done just about everything I aim to. No, Senor Dubois, do not be foolish. He's taking the dowry. Without it, I am penniless. Better penniless than that. Papa, don't be rash. Ricard is right. place to lie close to Virginia City. appearances were deceiving. Your father got is not near as badly hurt as we'd first thought. Ah, that is good news. Little Joe, it's a wise move on your part to bring him here instead of the longer ride to Virginia City. He's regained consciousness then. Oh, yes, he certainly has. As a matter of fact, I had to give him a powder to keep him quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Little lady, your father certainly has gumption. You know he's just aching to get up and take after those road agents. He, uh, he wants to bring back some sort of a chest. I told him it was silly. It's not silly, it's my diary. Ricardo, what are you waiting for? Why do you not go after those bandits? But, my dearest one, I was so concerned about your father. Now, I will go after those bandidos. Oh, Don Ricardo, that, that isn't necessary. My sons are out scouting the countryside right now. I'm sure they'll catch up with them very soon. 
In the meanwhile, Ben, Mr. Dubois must remain quiet. He's got to stay in bed at least three or four days. And I've got to get back to town. I'll look in on your father tomorrow. Hey, doctor. Not at all. Bye. Excuse me, I must go to my father. Oh, uh, mademoiselle, your father is resting now. Don't you think it might be better not to disturb him? Why don't you sit down here? We'll all have some refreshment. Huh? I want to thank you, monsieur. You have been very kind to extend us your hospitality. Well, I'm only sorry that you had such a bad experience. But our home is open to you, and I hope you'll feel as comfortable as possible. You are most gracious, senor. Not oh, we, we are all very much in your debt. Not at all. Ricardo, what will happen if my diary will not be found? Mademoiselle, you, you might have lost your lives. No, 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 you, you do not seem to understand, senor. You see, the diary was worth almost $100,000. Well, well, didn't you think it was kind of risky carrying such a fortune all the way from New Orleans? We plan for the marriage to take place at a mission on my ranchero in California. It's an old family custom. As for the wedding, well, senor, the dowry must be there for everyone to see. Oh, I, uh, I didn't realize that the dowry had to be at the wedding ceremony. It's an ancient custom for both our families. Well, you'll pardon me for saying so, senor, but under those circumstances, I thought you'd be much more perturbed over the theft of the chest. I do not wear my emotions on my sleeve, Senor Cartwright. I am perturbed, deeply perturbed. Oh, not over the loss of the dowry itself. I'm a wealthy man in my own right. But unless the dowry is recovered or replaced, the custom of my family will forbid me to marry my lovely Michelle. Just loving the girl isn't enough. La? Love is the least important thing in a marriage between two families such as ours. Oh, I see. You don't love her. Uh, Joseph. I did not say that, my friend. Please, Ricardo. Must we drag such intimate matters into the open? Uh, Miss Dubois is absolutely correct, Joseph. This is none of our concern. Uh, Mademoiselle, perhaps you would like to rest. Your room is upstairs right next to your father's. I'd be happy to show Mr. Dubois to her room. Merci, monsieur. Uh... Don Ricardo, your room is right over here. Oh, gracias. No, I'm not tired. Uh, but I would like to use this time to explore your ranchero. I'm sure that uh, Joseph would be very happy to show you around just as soon as you're ready. Yes, that would be a wise idea. Your son seems most eager to help. Um, would you... Uh, let's have some brandy. Well, senor, I'm ready. You and your father have been most gracious hosts. I'm hoping to learn from your advanced techniques. Well, we better get started. Oh, it's not necessary for you to waste your time, senor. I'm perfectly capable of finding my own way. Well, are you sure you can make it all right by yourself? Positive, amigo. Just point me in the direction to your branding corral. Anything you say, senor. Adios. He's doing very well for a man who had a bullet in the morning yesterday. Why shouldn't I do well? With such friends as you have turned out to be and your valiant son risking their lives to recover an old man's treasure. I would be very <laughs> ungrateful to do otherwise. One more. One more, Papa. Merci. It's all finished. Oh, I'll take it down to the kitchen. Good. Mm -hmm. You have a very devoted daughter. 
Oh, yes. Ah. Well, it's good to see you looking so much better. Thank you. First time we've had to talk. I don't know how to thank you. Well, the mere presence of a gentleman such as yourself and such a lovely daughter is uh, quite sufficient, thanks. Oh, Michelle is lovely. Yes. She's like her mother was. Huh? Uh, she died when Michelle was a baby. Perhaps it is just as well, for she didn't see my once ample fortune wiped out completely. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, foolish investments dissipated it completely. Everything except the dowry. I was determined not to touch that. And I was equally determined that Michelle should have a proper marriage. Uh, my family is one of the finest one in New Orleans, directly descended from the French royalty. And uh, Senor Fernandez? He is directly descended from the Spanish royalty. And when Fernandez told me about his vast ranchero here in the West, it was obvious that he can provide for my daughter properly. And uh, her dowry <laughs> pleased him very much, too. Why is a dowry so important to a man of wealth such as uh, Senor Fernandez? How can you describe the sky to a blind man? <laughs> <laughs> Our customs are ingrained in us. All I can say that dowry is a, a, a very important element in a marriage between families such as Dubois and Fernandez. Oh, I've, I've been making you talk much too much, and I'm terribly sorry. You should be resting now. Oh, no, no, no. no I no, hope you rest no. very comfortably. Thank you. You are very kind. Not at all. seems fair. There's only three of them. That's right, brother. I tell you what, you take the one with the bad wing, I'll take the other two. Well, I was thinking it ought to be the other way around. You're surrounded. Drop your gun. Working there, Adam? Yeah, take a good look, because it's a rare sight indeed. Very, very funny. Hey, you got the chest. What happened to the bandits? Adam, boss? Well, what happened? We got the jewels back, Paul, but we missed the thieves. Well, I wouldn't worry about them as long as we got, got the girl's dowry back. Yeah, but suppose the dowry turned out to be worthless. Now, what does that mean? Well, take a look at that. It's chipped. What? Beautiful workmanship. These jewels look like glass. What? They're imitations. <laughs> All imitations. Joe, is this the very same chest they took off the stagecoach? Well, I can't be sure. It looks like the same one. Well, I was not sure way to find out. Let's ask them. 
Now, let's, uh, let's keep what we know to ourselves for the time being. And why don't we fix the hinge on this chest so Mr. Dubois won't know that anybody's tampered with it, huh? Well, let's get in the barn. Sort of peculiar, ain't it? Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, though, about, uh, about what Fernandez said about no dowry, no wedding. Yeah? I just wonder if, uh, if he finds out the dowry's a fake. Maybe there'll still be no wedding. Now listen, Joe. If you got any notions about that gal, you forget them. Them Spaniards has got a temper plumb up to there. He'll tear you apart if you even wink at that gal. Buenos dias, senor. Hi. Well, I have been inspecting your uh, irrigation system. Ingenioso. I shall have my payance installed one like it on my own ranchero. Thank you. This is my brother, Hoss. Hi. Ah, the brothers who pursue the bandidos, eh? That's right. You were unsuccessful, eh? Well, not exactly. We got the chest back. And the bandidos? Well, seemed like they was a little more interested in saving their hides than they was the chest. Well, I shall never be able to thank you enough for your heroic efforts. If it hadn't been for you and your brother, the dowry would have been lost forever. Well, if you'll excuse me now, I must go and tell Michelle the good news. I wonder how he's gonna feel when he finds out those jewels are phonies. I don't know. I know how he's going to feel if he catches you fooling around with that gal. You leave her alone, you hear? Yes, sir. My dear Michelle, have you heard the news? The dowry has been recovered. Oh, Ricardo, marvelous. Now we can get married. Does it not please you? Hmm? Oh, of course, of course. Now our plans can proceed without delay. Ricardo? Ever since we have left New Orleans, you scarcely seem to see me. You go for rides by yourself, you take walks alone. Does it not occur to you that, uh, that I might like to accompany you? I have much on my mind. Still, my dear, there will be lots of times for rides and walks on my own ranchero after we are married. Sometimes I think it would have been much nicer if we had been married in New Orleans. Well, it's as I told you before, the padre who lives at the mission near my ranchero, is an old friend of the family. Well, he would be heartbroken if anybody but he officiated at my wedding. Now, you really must excuse me, my dear. I must not keep your father waiting. Does it not matter if I am kept waiting? Petulance does not become you, my flower. Soon you are going to be the donna of my ranchero, and you must learn to be gracious at all times. Now, I must go to tell your father about the recovery of the dowry. at all. I don't want to be a bother to you. Oh, not you bother me. <laughs> Are you sure I don't bother you? Well, you know, I'm not exactly sure. You want to hand me another spike? What's a spike? It beats heck out of me, huh? Ricardo, fortune has smiled on an old man. The dowry has been recovered. Mr. Cartwright just brought it back to me. Yes, I came by this afternoon to tell you, but you were asleep. Well, indeed, we are all fortunate. We're all fortunate. And especially to see you recovering so rapidly, Senor Dubois. Well, the Dubois family is not only distinguished, but hardy. Your marriage to Michel will produce children who will go strong and tall. And I am going to name my first son, Alexander. Please do not speak of such things. Why not, my child? Because Ricardo seems to regret his pledge of betrothal to me. No, that is not true. You are a prize to be cherished above all others. A man could have a wife no more charming or beautiful. 
If you find me so attractive, why do you not suggest a stroll in the moonlight? It's a lovely night and it's proper. We are engaged. Well, because to walk in the moonlight with one such as you is too much temptation for a mortal man like myself. Bravo, Ricardo. You are a true gentleman. The gentle part is correct, Papa. Besides, I need my rest. Tomorrow morning, I plan to leave early for my ranchero. Leave? Uh, without us? Well, uh, you will be unable to travel for a week. Besides, I grow greatly worried about this absence from my ranchero. I fear that the peons are growing lazy, neglectful. You and Michelle can follow later, and I will have things ready for your arrival. Oh, you are talking logically, of course. We will talk about this further in the morning before you leave. Right now, I am in need of rest. Of course, Senor de Bois. Until tomorrow. My dreams will be only of you. He is indeed an aristocrat. Michelle. I am afraid you offended him. I meant to. He's so cold, so aloof. <laughs> Perhaps your young and romantic heart expects too much. Perhaps you're right, Papa. And what's more important, he can offer you what I was unable to give you in recent years. Wealth, security, servants to do your bidding. And security for you too, Papa. This is one thing I really like, Ricardo, for he insisted that you come and live with us. <sighs> it means nothing. You do to me, Papa. <sighs> You certainly couldn't have missed him by more than an inch or two. But I did miss. Papa, I... Papa, Papa, please don't get excited. Well, the bandits are trying to steal my money, my fortune, the only fortune I have. And I'm not to be excited. Oh, uh, Monsieur Dubois, Michelle is right. You must not get excited. The important thing is that your chest is safe. That gun, I reckon they got away. Well, we didn't have much chance of catching them in the dark anyway. Why she let him get away. Well, you're absolutely right. I'll tell you what, while Hoss and I get some sleep, you can have your opportunity. Now, they've tried twice to get the dowry, and chances are they'll try a third time, so why don't you just stay here and keep a uh, vigilant watch, all right? Let's go. You asked for that, little brother. Leave him out there till he gets moon blind. 
And then I take it you found absolutely nothing, huh? Uh, he got away slick as a whistle for. Pretty odd. Well, I was a brave bunch, sneaking in the house the way they did. Yeah, but they'd be fist fighting mad if they discovered there wasn't nothing in that chest but a bunch of phony imitations. No, you don't get my point. They could have been given information about the chest being on the stagecoach. Yeah, but how did they know the chest was under Dubois' bed? Yeah. You know, someone had to tell them where the diary chest was kept. Paul, don't look at me. What about Dubois himself? Oh, I don't think so, now. Now, whether Dubois knows that the chest is worthless or not, what would he gain by arranging to have it stolen? Well, it leaves Ricardo. Yeah, but why would he want to steal it? He's going to get the dowry anyhow as soon as he marries Michelle. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, there are only two things for sure. We know the chest is worthless. The bandits think it contains a fortune. Well, what do you think we ought to do? Nothing. Not right now. You two boys go to bed. Ain't you going to go to bed? It's kind of late, Paul. No, I'm not going to bed yet. Well, with uh, Pa thinking and uh, Joe guarding, uh, what's it left for me and you to do? Not a bad burn thing. Let's go to bed anyway. Right. Well, they do not give up easily, this man, but I imagine after two failures, they will not try again. Do you really think so, Ricardo? Well, at least we are assured of sleep without further disturbance. I understand our host has posted guards around the house to keep us protected. For the second time, I shall say good night and also add my heartfelt respect for your vigilance and bravery. Good night. Excuse me, Papa. Wait, Ricardo. I hope that what has happened has changed your mind about going on ahead without us. Papa, in his weakened condition, shouldn't be left alone with the responsibility of the dowry. You are right, of course. No wonder I am so taken with you, my darling. I will wait and we'll travel to California together. Papa, what's wrong with Ricardo? Why? Do you think he no longer loves me? Of course he loves you, my petite. But just now he refused to kiss me. It's something the matter with me? There's nothing the matter with you, my petite. Papa, you should go to sleep now. It's bad for you to stay up late. Come in. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Come in. Well, how are we feeling? Mr. Cartwright, will you please see that he goes to sleep? Miss Dubois, I shall be most pleased to see that he goes to sleep. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, Papa. Good night, Good night. Good night. I just dropped by to make sure that everything was all right. Of course I'm all right. You like it? Beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship. Thank you. I've made it myself. You made this yourself? Oui, monsieur. The creation of fine hand pieces is my hobby. It was for many years. I gave quite a few to my friends. Really? to scare you. With all the excitement, I couldn't sleep. How's your father? Oh, he's fine. He's sleeping now. Thank you. That's good. I don't think they'll be back tonight. I hope not. Such a pretty night. Yes, it is. 
you mind if I ask you a personal question? No. How can a beautiful girl like you want to marry a man who's more interested in your dowry than he is in you? Sometimes I do wonder if Ricardo is more interested in the dowry than me. Well, I know what I'd do if I was in his place. What? Why did you do it? Why did I do it? He wanted to see what I'd do if I was in his place. You know, Ricardo has never kissed me. Well, that's Ricardo's problem. Is there? Yeah, Ricardo is where? Right behind you. Right behind me. Hmm. Hmm. You see it? Buenas noches, Michelle, Senor Cartwright. Ricardo, please forgive me. Forgive I... you, forgive you, forgive you for what? It's moonlight, and you are very beautiful. And Senor Cartwright is a mortal man. That's a Spanish temper? I've never been so insulted. I still don't know why she wants to marry him. Good to see you. Oh, fine. I always stop by here when I'm swinging back on my return trip. Just to yeah. uh, drink one of these and get the dust out of my gullet. <laughs> Say, I want to thank you for taking care of little Joe the way you did. Oh, any time, any time. Oh, uh, Ben, I was wondering about that old fella. You know, the uh, one that got shot in the stagecoach hold up, that Mr. Uh... Oh, you mean Monsieur Dubois? Yeah, yeah. How is he? Oh, just fine, just fine. Come along real good. Oh, peculiar thing about that hold up. Uh huh? You know the other fella, the uh, Spanish dude, the one that's going to marry this Mr. Uh, Dubois' daughter? Oh, you mean Don Ricardo Fernandez? Mm. <laughs> well, he's really something. <laughs> now, what does that mean? Well, he was always talking about this big spread he has at Travis Wells in California. Yeah? <laughs> uh, well, I was kind of curious about it, so I detoured the stage a couple of miles just to take a look at it. Huh? Found out a funny thing. Well, what did you find out? Well, you know that spread he says he owns? You mean he doesn't own it? Oh, no, he, he, he owns it all right. But the funny thing is, though, that... Well, well what's so funny about it? Now, look, would you mind piping down and let me finish my story? Well, I wish you would finish it. Well, I will as soon as I wipe some more of this alkali out of my throat. Apologize about last night. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to slap you. I was angry with Don Ricardo. I, I'm not going to marry him. I wouldn't marry a man who takes so lightly finding his intended bride in the arms of another man. Well, I have to admit, I, uh, I wouldn't have taken the whole thing so lightly myself. I'm sure you wouldn't have. As I said, Don Ricardo has no feelings for me. Does he know yet that you've changed your mind about marrying? No, not yet. I'll tell him when I see him. Do you know where he is? Well, I imagine he's riding around the ranch as usual. Alone as usual. Well, I'll go and tell Papa about this. 
I shall never tire of riding around your magnificent Ponderosa. I have learned much. For some reason unknown to myself, I've offended you. I offer my apologies, whatever the reasons. Your words merely add further insult, Don Ricardo. But it doesn't matter now. I have something to tell you. And I shall give you my undivided attention, my dove. But before you speak, there is something that I'm forced to do. Why did you do it? I've decided, after all, Senor Joseph Cartwright, that your indiscretion of last night was indeed a serious insult to my name. All right, what do you want to do about it? I demand satisfaction. Oh, that's fine. Why don't you step out of the way? Okay, how do you want to get it? Like this. Oh, like that, huh? about. He's going to get hurt. Well, I wouldn't worry. Uh, Joe can take care of himself. I'm not talking about Joe. I'm talking about Don Ricardo. Get that nice suit all dirty. Well, that is life. It's a question of honor. Your brother kissed me last night. Uh, figures. It's not over yet. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute.
Henry, you did fight for me. I knew one. Uh, where are the opponents, Senor Joseph? You, you took your beating gracefully. Oh, yeah, I thought I did. Without the gloves, you'd have never taken them. Well, what's going on here? Well, it was a pretty good fight, Pa. Uh, Ricardo here was uh, defending his honor, and uh, little brother was uh, defending himself. Uh, sorry you and Horse missed it. Where is Horse? Oh, well, uh, things were getting kind of dull around here, so uh, he took himself a little nap. Oh, he did, huh? Monsieur Cartwright, it was a terrible fight. Oh, but my Ricardo, oh, he was magnificent. Well, I wasn't so bad myself. Your son is a worthy opponent, senor. We fought to an honorable draw. Well, isn't that interesting? While you two were fighting and you were watching and Hoss was sleeping, I saw three men riding up at the dowry. My what? dowry? Yeah. Michel. Papa. Your dowry was torn. My congratulations, Senor Fernandez. Your robbery was finally a success. My robbery? Your loose words are insulting, Senor. Oh, Senor Ricardo. Let's not have another fight. He finally succeeded in having Michelle's dowry stolen. Very clever scheme. What do you mean? Uh, well, Senor Fernandez. Ricardo, did you steal my dowry? The man is a charlatan, a liar, a thief, a man without honor. Papa, please. Ricardo, why? It is simple and shameful. I do not own a rich and vast ranchero. They're just a poor few acres. There is no big hacienda. Just an old sod hut. I don't understand. You lied to me. You said that you loved me. That is the one truth in the whole miserable business. When I met you in New Orleans and conceived the idea of the dowry, I had no feeling. But on the trip across the country, watching you, speaking to you, I fell in love. And it's a fine way to make love, lying and stealing. Well, I tried to call off the robbery, but my men wouldn't hear of it when I met them on my rides around the Ponderosa. They were eager for the famous Dubois jewels. I tried to avoid you, to be cold to you, so that you would not be hurt when the marriage was canceled. But my pride could not permit me to do that. I understand, Ricardo. The most important thing to me now is that you love me and that you're sorry about what happened. I love you. Michelle, love. How can you love such a man? Yes. How can you do that? After all, you know about me. I do what my heart tells me. Well, you must lose this love. With all this foolishness, I'm going to go to prison. Well, that uh, kind of depends upon whether Senor Dubois is going to uh, press charges. Papa, please forgive him. Please. Never. Monsieur Cartwright, I demand you notify the sheriff at once. Michelle, may I speak with your father alone, please? That will do no good. When he's like this, it's impossible. Please. Well, that's the way she goes. Monsieur Dubois. You just heard your daughter say that she loved Don Ricardo. Ah, love, 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 that's all I hear. He was after her dowry. Well, he confessed as much. You know, I have a bit of a confession to make myself. I, uh, I looked into your dowry chest and saw all those magnificent jewels. They're just beautiful. One thing that bothered me, though, I, th I thought that the, the settings were not quite as... As, as, as fine as they might have been. Oh, you, you mean the settings? <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, I think they are as good as any I've ever seen. No, I, I, I felt that they were inferior compared to the Jews themselves. And what do you mean? Oh, they are magnificent, uh, Mr. Cartwright. I am an artist. Yes, you are. Very well. I utilize my skill in making fine guns to devise a fake dowry.
for Michelle. She needed one to be married properly. Oh, I wanted to tell them later on, sometime, that... Uh, uh, I'm a foolish old man who couldn't even be successfully dishonest. Well, if I have to start to work like a peon in the fields, let us get on with it. Oh, remember, you're all invited to the wedding celebration at my ranchero in two weeks. Uh, can I kiss the bride? Joseph? I can't kiss the bride. <laughs> you're gonna meet that stage in Virginia City. You better get going. Have a good trip. Right. Thank you. Miss Goodbye. You. I just not know how lucky he was when he won that toss and didn't have to go on the cattle drive. I don't care if I never drive cattle again. Yeah, sure dusty. Dusty? I got enough dirt in my mouth to plant corn in. Well, wash it out with this. Thanks. I'll wash it out with something better than water. I wonder what's keeping pop. That's a lot of money. Yep, and all for taxes. Half death and taxes. Stop complaining. I'm just complaining about the dirt in my mouth. Well, here it is. $10,000 drawn on Wells Fargo Company. Now, I've already endorsed it. Isn't that kind of dangerous? I mean, anybody could cash it now. Well, maybe it is, but we've got to get this money to the territorial tax office before noon on Saturday, and we've also got to get to the Double C Ranch before they sell off all that good stock. All right, who makes the trip to Genoa? Well, Adam, uh, you know all about our tax setup. <clears throat> I accept. I'd much rather ride to Genoa than drive that breeding stock up through those mountains. Yeah, well, who wouldn't? I think we ought to toss on it, Pa. No, it's all settled. Adam, I guess you'd better get started right away. Yep, won't be safe in there. Now, remember, you've got till the day after tomorrow, no longer. Well, I'll see you in about four days. It was something important, Jeff. It is. Another prison break. How many this time? Two. Got away early this morning. Now, we want you to wire all town marshals and sheriffs in a 100-mile area. Ask them to organize posses. All right, Jeff. I hope you catch them. Always do. But these two are tough hombres. They're hold-up men and they're killers. <laughs>
break it. This better be the place. I can't drag that chain another foot. Ah, uh, this is it, all right. Uh, as soon as Brubaker gets here with those horses, we'll be hey, all the way free. You better not forget the chisel to break these blasted oh, chains. Nah, he won't. He won't. He won't. Uh, well, you're betting a lot on him. Lousy prison guard. Well, he may be a lousy prison guard, but he helped us escape. He uh, set that chase going in the wrong direction. Oh, he'll be here all right. <sighs> Maybe. Drooling for that money. <laughs> <laughs> See, you boys made it all right. Yeah, we made it. Where's the horses? Yeah, where's the chisel to break these chains? I risked enough letting you escape and setting a false trail. Any more than that, make the odds too high. Too high for who, Brubaker? For me. Come on, Trace. Where's the money? It's all you care about, the money? At 5,000, you got buried. Now, where is it? Well, all right. Guess there ain't nothing we can do about it in a point, Dexter. No. You want it or not? Well, where is it? Right here, Brubaker. This stupid prison guy. He fell for it, Trace. You kill me, would you, Trace? Get out of those clothes quick. I escaped, Trace, didn't I? Oh, didn't I? Mm hmm. I'm going to give you a chance to go back and tell that warden just how you did it. Get out of those clothes quick. I'd kill you. That's only close enough for you, Trace. How about me? Uh, there's a little town named Bowleg a few miles from here. We'll get you fixed up there. Oh, come on, Sheriff. Come on. What's the hold up anyway? Let's get this whole thing over with. We're waiting for Henry Neighbors. And Billy McCord. If I didn't let that boy come along, he'd quit. But I sure hate leaving my stables untended. Look, Townsend, you don't have to go if you don't want to. We're short-handed, what with the roundup and all. Oh, I'll go. But I'm sure getting tired of these blind chases. Whole town is. Oh, quit complaining. Think of the business I'm losing, having to close down my gambling tables and all. And five will get you 50, we come back with nothing but saddle sores. I'm only doing what the territorial governor expects us to do. Go get him, Sheriff. Sure would like to have me a couple of convicts, scalps. Put that thing away before I take it away from you. Dang kids. Settle down now. We're waiting for Henry Neighbors. Could you finish cleaning out all them stalls? Yeah. You throw hay in them? Yes, I threw hay in them. Hey, Sheriff, ain't that going to get me a badge? Yeah, you'll get a badge against my better judgment. Hey, here comes old Turkey Neck. Henry? Henry? You got your slicker? It might rain. Remember, you caught a bad cold last time you went out with the boys. I have it, Martha. Your handkerchief? Yes, Martha. Sheriff, uh, Good. you think I she's going along with us? I won't, Martha. Hey, come on, old man. Them convicts ain't going to wait for us. I'm uh, sorry I had to call on you again, Henry. All right. Here, let me take that. You'll stick yourself and bleed all over your clean shirt. Thank you, Martha. I'll be with you in just a minute, Sheriff. Well, if we're going, let's get moving. Well, there's gloves in the saddle roll, Henry. All right. Goodbye, Martha. Goodbye, Henry. And, Henry, I ain't worried about you running into them criminals, but don't fall off the horse. I won't, Martha. Goodbye. Goodbye, Henry. Yeah, I'll hold and you get on. All right, thank you. 
Thank you, Martha. Come on. Come on. Bye, Henry. Goodbye. Come on! Get off. Let's give the horse time to rest a little bit. Listen, Trace. These chains, we gotta be smart and keep moving. Posse's will be combing the whole territory for us. For us? Well, yeah. Well, you wouldn't, Trace. I, I mean, after us busting out together and everything. Here's where we part company. Now you'd slow me down. Horse can't make any time riding double. Oh, you, you can't. You move off over there about 20 feet. Move. Far well, enough. Now, here I'm going to leave you this rifle. Now, if you get in any real trouble now, you use it. Good luck, Born Dexter. Trace! Please! off that horse. You heard me. Get down. Just unbuckle that gun belt. Throw it all out in front of you. Now get to shucking them clothes. You heard me.
better save some of that. You sound just like your wife. Yeah, well, we got no chance of finding anybody in all this country. Criminals don't come this way anyhow. Maybe not, but we got to try. He could come this way. Put that thing away! You know something, Sheriff? I got a feeling. I got a feeling I'm going to get my first notch. Put it away! Yes, sir. How you doing, Henry? You feel you can make a few more miles? Yeah, sure. Don't worry about me. Well, come on, then. Don't hit me no more. Please, don't hit me no more. No, no, please don't hit me no more. Please, please, please. Well, take it easy, old timer. Please. I'm not going to hit you. Here, let's have a look at that. No. Now. Come on, come no, on. No, please, come please. On. That doesn't seem to be too serious. Let's see if we can get you over there on that cut. Get on your feet. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna hit me. Please, please. Come on, now. Please. You're gonna be all right, don't you? You just sit right down there. Again, huh? See if that doesn't make it feel a little better, huh? How many of you broke out of prison? I mean, the clothes, they're not mine. If you come here looking for your friend, he's been and gone. Right there's his leg irons, if and you don't believe me. How long has he been gone? Well, I told you, he just left. Listen, uh, my name is Cartwright, Adam Cartwright. You see, this fellow drew down on me, he took my... From away. Why, sure, I know your pa well. But what you doing in them there duds? Well, like I was saying, this fellow that hit you drew down on me and he took my horse and my clothes and... Well, I want to catch him, but quick. Now, I could use one of your horses and maybe some clothes and a gun if you got one. How come you want to go after a dangerous hombre like that? Well, it just so happened that there was a bank draft in my saddle pocket, about $10,000 worth, and I mean to get it back. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I ain't got no clothes for you, but the horse and gun you can have. <laughs> that is, if that other fella didn't take it, no. No, no, here it is. He didn't find it. It's here, all right. There you are. Listen to you. Uh, I think maybe you could get to the nearest town and uh, maybe alert the sheriff there. <laughs> That'd be bow legs, and, and don't you worry none. I can make it. A crack on the head don't hurt an old desert rat like me. <laughs> Come on now, we better saddle you up a horse and quick, huh?
sure give me a start there. Why, why, you're one of them guards from the prison. Now, the convict got away in one of your horses, huh? Well, don't worry, old man. I'll get it back for you. Uh, that weren't the way it was at all. I'd give it to him. You give him your horse? Yeah, because a convict made him change clothes and stole his horse. And that real convict, he came here and made me take off his chains, and he, and he hit me on the head right here. Oh, who's this other fella? Adam Cartwright. I know his whole family. And, and Adam, he went after that there convict to get his horse and saddle back. Well, he's just got her. He's got her, huh? Why? Because there's a bank draft in that there saddle pocket. And a big one. A bank draft? Well, it's uh, the same as money, ain't it? You know how much? Ten thousand dollars, he said. And I'm riding to the town for help. Right now. Uh-uh. Get in the house, old man. Come on. Another two hours and we'll fry in our own grease. Ah, you slob! What's the matter with you? Yeah, it'll be hot, all right. That's why the convicts had never come this way. Ooh. Ooh. What's the matter? You don't like my coffee? Well, you know, maybe we should have brought along old Martha to do it for you. She, um, she button your shoes, don't she? If this is the best you could do, maybe we should have brought her. Well, she'd be safe enough. We're always getting up posses, but we don't never catch nobody. Well, I got me a feeling this time. You got a feeling. Well, I got a feeling. We don't get nothing for catching them, and it's 20 to 1. Another, another posse's already caught them down by the border. We got to look. Why? Every day I'm away from my business, it costs me business. You call that tin horn gambling join a business? Now, you shut up, stable boy. Get back to your shovel. Kill you. You ever say that again, I'll kill you. Cord, put that gun down. I said put it down. You saw that, Sheriff. You saw that. Don't ever ask me to go riding posse with you oh, again. Shut up, shut up, all of you. Stop all this jawway. We got enough to do without quarreling amongst ourselves. And you, McCord. You pull that gun again without reason, and I'll take it away from you. Somebody put out that fire. Let's get back in the saddle.
Yeah, looks like I'm going to get my first notch. You shut up and keep still. Come from over there. Got time for a drink of water, Sheriff? My mouth's kind of dry. Close mine. Come on. Come on, boy. Let's go. Come on, poke your head up again. I'll knock it off. See ya. Well, there's your prisoner. He uh, waylaid me back down the road there and made me change clothes with him. Take off your gun belt. You don't understand. <laughs> Man escaped from your prison and uh, he stopped me back there. Take off your gun belt. Turn around. You're making a mistake, mister. My name's Cartwright. Well, what's all this about? Get over by that tree. You stay put. Howdy. Howdy. Where are you from, Sheriff? I'm Hill from Bowlegs, looking for convicts. I guess we got one. We got two. I'm Brubaker, territorial prison. Which one's he? It's Elmer Trace. Sheriff, that is not right. My name is Adam Cartwright. Shut up. I'll keep him shut. Now, you listen to me, Sheriff. I am no convict. Shut your mouth. I want to get this thing straightened out. I'm not Elmer Trace. I said shut up. Go ahead. Go ahead, hit me. I sure would like to kill you. McCord, take it easy. Why, he's a lousy convict. He just killed a man a few minutes ago. What do you expect me to do, hold his hand? Take it easy, I said. We'll hear your story a little later. I hear this Elmer Trace is a real hard character. Oh, who do you think that dead man is over there? Don't know. It's his partner. You mean he killed his partner? Yeah, they probably waylaid some poor devil and then got into a quarrel about who's going to wear his clothes and ride his horse. Well, Sheriff, shouldn't we uh, search the prisoner or, or something? Yeah, I was going to do that. Take those, will you? Yeah. It's terrible. Terrible. Killing and robbing. You like lawn? Well, like what? 
being a lawman, going on posses and all. Boy, I sure would. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I just love it. Running after some gun-happy convict with maggots where his brains ought to be. Waiting for him to bushwhack you. Yeah, I like it all right. Yeah, well, don't worry. He's going to get his. They're going to hang him. Will they? Judges and jury, all that, huh? Search him good, Sheriff. I know these prisoners, they got knives and all kinds of things hidden on them. Well, there ain't nothing on this one. I want to ask you some questions. We already know all the answers. Where'd you get that gun? From an old prospector, a little ways back. What was his name? I don't know. You borrow a gun from a man, you don't know his name? Well, I'd have to tell you the whole story, or you won't believe any of it. We ain't gonna believe none of it anyhow. I'm still waiting to hear where you got that gun. Hey. But there ain't nobody around here faster than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're pretty fast with that thing, kid. Well, I practice all the time. What do you do when you're not practicing? I work for Mr. Townsend in his livery stable. Oh, what a shame. A man of your ability? What I really want to be is a, a deputy, full-time deputy. Hmm. Are you through with him? Search him? Yeah, nothing on him. Right. He'll set the time across the saddle. To get them good clothes. Oh, well, they obviously killed somebody for him. Them rotten murders. What do you suppose they'll do with him? Oh, he'll get five years, maybe less. Five years, maybe less for murder? All he needs is a good lawyer. There ought to be something we can do about it. Maybe there is. We'll be right with you. Yeah. I tell you, Sheriff, I'm not a convict. Shut up, cowboy. We've heard enough out of you. Ted will get you 40. You've done this before. Let's get this over with. Oh, no, McCord, you ain't gonna do that. I ain't asking, Sheriff. I said we're gonna hang him. I don't want another chirp out of you, boy. They never take him in alive. You know how they take them in? Tied across the saddle. That's right. Let's go. Hold it! I'll kill the first man that puts a rope on him. This man here ain't worth taking in alive. What kind of a law officer are you, anyway? He's law man enough to know that no jury's gonna hang him. They're gonna turn him loose. That's for a jury to decide, not us. Man has a right to prove his innocence. Now, if you take me back to Genoa, you'll find that people back there know me. I say we string him up. I've had enough of you. Shut up! Give me that rope, kid. I tell you what this man is doing here. He's stalling for time. It's a long way to Juneau. A lot can happen between here and there. He's right. Why don't you listen to him? All right, Sheriff. The prospector. The man that gave me the gun. Now, he lives only half a dozen miles from here. Take me back there. He knows me. That's all I ask is a chance. 
You men want him on your conscience? Well, I don't. All right, mister, that's what you get, a chance. Get him on the horse and let's go. Serious about wanting to take a job, Lon? Sure I am. I want that badge. That'll stop them. Stop who? Everybody's laughing at me behind my back. I know they do it. But that's why I'm gonna get them. Easy, easy. You know, I don't want that killer taken back alive. You help me, I'll help you. Keep an eye on him. Hey, open up. The old fellow's dead. I can't believe it. Go have a look. Not you. Caught right. You're Trace, aren't you? Mm-hmm. You know what I want. <laughs> they won't believe you. They want to hang you. Oh, the sheriff ain't going to be able to stop them. Would you hand me that little bank draft? I'll stop them. Now, I got nothing to lose. That's good enough for me. I say we hang him right now. Well, it's what I've been telling you all along. Guess we should have listened to the kid. It's still not too late. You still holding out? I'm against it. I'm against it, and so is Hill. Hill, come on out here. You try to stop us, I'll see you lose your job. Don't you threaten me, Townsend. I ain't taking that kind of talk. Well, now, if you don't want in on it, take a little walk till it's over. Unbuckle that gun belt and drop it. Ooh. He was asking for it. Now there ain't nothing stopping us. It's your last chance. You change your mind, you just let me know. Stop! Stop or I'll shoot! There ain't gonna be no hanging, it ain't right. No, 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 you take your hands away from that gun. Doesn't mean I won't shoot you too. I don't know how to handle this, but the sheriff will know when he comes to. Now, you, you go on, get back to the shack and take him inside. Go on, hurry. Go on, hurry. I swear, you come any closer and I'll shoot. Easy. 
Easy. Watch his eyes. You stay where you are, do you hear? I'm not fooling him. You stay there, or I'll shoot. Relax it now. Go on, hurry. Thank you for what you've done, neighbors. You sure surprised me. Just keep that handkerchief pressed against the wound and the bleeding will stop. Right. I'll get you to the doctor as soon as we get out of this mess. Why didn't you show me this bank draft before? I suspected the guard was Trace. But given you the draft then, he'd have killed you for it. How did Trace know that you had it? Well, I guess the prospector told him before he killed him. How you doing, Mr. Neighbors? Weak. Well, you lost a lot of blood. It's beginning to hurt, too. Think you're strong enough to guard that window? I think so. You gonna make an hold this door? Maybe. Get more. At back window. Somebody's trying to sneak around the back. Neighbors is watching that back window. Good. As long as they think that back window's being watched, they're not going to try to leave. We'll use that wagon over there. The wagon? It's a ram. We'll ram that door, huh? Come here. Hey, McCord! Come here, I want to talk. Go ahead, talk to him, kid. Make sure he doesn't open that door. Come on. What do you want, Hill? You're making a mistake, McCord. I know what I'm doing. This fella here is Adam Cartwright. It's not gonna work. I can prove it. Lift up the tongue. That fella you think's a prison guard is Elmer Trace. I think you're lying. I think you got a gun pointed at that stupid sheriff of ours. Right, kid. Keep talking to him. Hey, Hill. Hey, Hill, you tell neighbors. You tell him I could have shot him through any eyes if I'd have wanted. Okay. Kid, come on. Oh, Hill. We're coming in after him. Okay, we'll push it from back. I'll shoot the first man that comes through. Come on, push it.
thought you was going to get off easy, didn't you? I'll get the rope. You too, Sheriff. All right, kid, back over here. Townsend, Skidmore, drop your guns. Come on! I'm about to get me $10,000, kid. Cartwright's got a bank draft that's worth that much. Now, you in with me, huh? 50-50, partners? That or you're dead. You lied to me. Ah! No! Stupid! Come on, get over there, Chef. All right, Cartwright. And now you don't care much for Junior here. If you don't come up with that bank draft, this future lawman is dead. the boy go, Trace. I'll give you the draft. He was a lawman. I made a big mistake. Well, you didn't make the mistake you nearly could have made. All of you. And you fellas don't have to worry about being called for posse duty again. You'd better find a way to thank Henry Neighbors. Now put him on a horse and get him to a doctor. men for years. Strange which one turned out to be the real man. Yeah. I hope I see you again. Be a pleasure, Sheriff. 